Hello everyone and welcome to the first in an occasional series that I'm calling, very originally, Throwback Thursday. Now, if you see a video on a Throwback Thursday, it means that you've seen the cleaner before, albeit maybe many years ago, and filmed on a very low definition camera. As in the case of this Electrolux Intensity, I did a very short video of this and that was before I even decided to start a YouTube channel. So if you check back on my channel, you'll find a very poor video of this in action. Well, I got rid of that particular model a long time ago, but when another one came up on eBay, this is a used machine, it's got the original box as you can see, I thought I would get it because I did quite like it. It was a bit, a bit different. And now, because we don't really have Electrolux branded vacuum cleaners anymore, we now have AEG branded, but we don't actually have the Electrolux brand for vacuums, which is a bit of a shame. So instead of the poor quality definition you got with the first video, if you can watch this in 4K, you will be able to see this video in 4K. Now it's obviously it's used, but it looked quite in quite good condition in the eBay pictures. Right, let's. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think there's any instructions. I've just ordered some new bags for this because I, I don't think it's got any spare bags. Now, how are we going to get this out without damaging the polystyrene? Uh, Dear me, that doesn't want to come out. Come on, don't be shy, folks. I'm going to pause because I don't want to start swearing. Well, here it is. It made rather an undignified entrance into the world, but I've got it out of the box. It had a bit of dust on it. I've given it a wipe and I've given it a brief polish. It doesn't need a lot doing to it, I'm glad to say. So, these were available also in the US of A. I know I've seen these um, American videos of these. And uh, towards the end of the run in the UK, these were being sold off at um, our local Curry's stores for about £50. And that's roughly what I paid for this second hand one. But I'm pretty pleased with it so far, as long as it works. Bit of an unusual vacuum this. As you can see it folds down into quite a small machine although the footprint is quite long, longer than a, a regular upright but it's about the same width as a regular upright cleaner but this could go in a cupboard, perhaps a low cupboard. It's exclusively for carpets and hard floors. Twin motors, one for the agitator and one for the suction motor. No tools can be attached to this. It is a little bit reminiscent of the Miele Art, but the Miele Art did at least have a hose for doing some above floor cleaning, but the Miele Art didn't have a rotating brush. Like the Miele Art, this has a tiny, tiny dust bag, but it did come with quite a lot. I think it was about at least 10 dust bags it came with when it was new. So let's have a closer look. Now I know these were prone to failure, the handle mechanism. So it might need a little bit of greasing or oil or something on it because it does seem a little bit rough. Now, if I can remember to open it out, I think we have to, I'm not sure, I think we do this first and then move the handle up. Right, so now it's in upright mode. It's got a looped handle and you can actually alter the height of the handle. There's a little telescopic button here and we can raise it up. And then we have a little handle release button, foot operated button on the bottom of the cleaner. So we can lower the handle to the operating position. It stays in the operating position so you can actually lift it over carpet fringes and if you need to clean a higher pile rug you can lift it over the rug. If you press the handle release button again you can lower the handle for cleaning under low furniture. So here's the handle release button I've just shown you. 
The other button is an automatic cord rewind, which is unusual for an upright vacuum. So basically, here's the cord. Let's hope there's nothing wrong with the cord as I pull it out. And then of course, when you finish cleaning, you press on the pedal and the cord will rewind automatically. Let's keep pulling it out because obviously I'm going to plug it in. There we are. There's a little display here that, um, from what I remember of the instructions, from what I remember, these light up when you need to change the filter or change the bag. And from memory, this light here above the word optimum illuminates green when the machine is operating efficiently. Here you can see the push button controls located on top of the handle. So if you want to clean carpets, you obviously press the on button for carpet. And if you want to clean your hard floors, you press the on button for bare floors. At the front of the nozzle, we have bare floor and carpet indicators. So when you're using the machine, according to the setting, either the bare floor light will illuminate or the carpet one will. Okay, let's have a look at the incy wincy teeny weeny bag that's located under this panel here. This is the carry handle, which you can use when the machine's folded up to carry the machine upstairs or from room to room. But we can just remove the whole top here and pretty clean throughout. Not bad at all. I don't think this has had very much use. There is an exhaust filter, which you can buy, but that is not bad at all, is it? It's pretty clean. I think it's HEPA. Not sure if it's washable, but yes, I can tell this machine really, for one reason or another, hasn't been used very much at all. Hang on, that doesn't go in like that. Hang on, there we are. That fits in that way. There we go. And here is, and it already, it's got dirt in, so it's not a clean bag. I've got a pack, a pack of 10, I think, on its way to me, should arrive in the next day or so. Look how tiny that bag is. Now, if you know what the average bag of flour looks like, this is sort of a half size bag of flour, you know, 500 gram bag of flour, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a 700 gram bag, but it is teeny tiny, look. It's no wonder this machine didn't last very long. It's, it's a very niche vacuum cleaner, as the Miele Art was. That isn't too bad, look. I can wash that gently. Let me just wipe it on the floor. Yeah, it's just, just a little bit of black muck on there. It's not clogged. And inside here, some fine dust in the bag compartment, but it's nothing, nothing too major. Nothing to get my knickers in a twist over. So if this machine works, I'll be pretty pleased with it. Obviously, there's a little catch here, which will prevent me, I'm assuming, prevent me from closing. Well, no, it doesn't. So I could actually use this bagless, but it would be quite a messy affair to try and empty it. I assume that that would stop unless there's something broken. That could be the case. I think that possibly would have been spring loaded. There may be, is there anything in there? Mm, there possibly would have been a little spring or something. But anyway, we'll pop it back in and we can turn it on anyway. Oh, hang on, that goes in there. That's it, that slides in. There we are. That's in place. Pop the top back on. And before we give this a go, we'll have a look at the underside of this vacuum. According to the box, this Electrolux intensity has over 50% more suction power than the leading upright vacuum cleaner. And that's dated, if I can see from here, March 2007. Basically, they're claiming that, I think, because the motor is so close to the actual agitator where the suction is based, the motor is just inches away from it, unlike some cleaners where obviously the air has to pass through lots of in internal ducting and hoses and pipes. So that's why it was supposed to be, give you an intense clean. And from my memory, it was a pretty good vacuum and probably 
a pretty good deep cleaner despite the tiny bag so here is again I've given it a quick wipe over but it was all fairly clean anyway the brush roll short but relatively stiff brushes and you've got some fixed brushes as well here either side some quite deep side suction channels as well obviously this is must be where the belt is I think it could be a toothed belt I'd have to look at that to check this side obviously it would clean much closer to the edge but that seems to be fine and dandy we've got some wheels as well they seem fairly rubberized they're not hard plastic so they're more like rollers and wheels aren't they and of course you've got the two large wheels on the back so here's the uh, rating sticker Electrolux assembled in Mexico it's model Z5020 obviously this is a 230 to 240 volt version 1200 watts 50 hertz and there's a customer care phone line there and some product numbers for the filter belt are ah, so you do have to change the belt from time to time so it may not be a toothed belt and there's a code there for the bag and the serial number is 0732001268 okay in time honored tradition and because i'm a big girl i'm going to make my retreat while I turn this machine on. Although I say that, judging by the buttons on the handle, I might not have that option because they don't have a positive feel about them. I think I'm going to have to do it, turn it on actually with the switch on the handle, but I'll try it anyway. We'll see if it turns on. When I turn it on at the socket here. No, it doesn't. Oh dear. Right. Well, oh, it's a blue light. The blue optimum light down here has illuminated. So we know that there's power reaching the cleaner. Okie dokie then. There is a little clip here just under the handle. Where you're supposed to put the mains cord around just to keep it out of the way. I'm gonna first turn it on with the suction motor only. So I'll press the bare floor button. Well, it doesn't smell, but it does sound a little bit odd, that, if I'm honest. It was always a noisy cleaner. Okay, let's try it now. With the brush roll combined. Apologies to any headphone users if you've gone a little bit deaf there. Hmm, don't know if that sounds, you know, there's no burning electrical smell. It might just be that noisy, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's much point in stripping this down. But yeah, they always were fairly noisy machines. I'm going to put some dirt down. It looks like it's leaving track marks in this carpet, but it's... <laughs> It's very warm, this carpet. Viewers to my channel will know this carpet. It's had so much thrown onto it. It's been shampooed that many times. It is really due for replacement this year. I'm gonna get something with a bit more pile. Um, right, well, I'm gonna put down a little bit of my tester dirt just to see if there's any agitation. I might do a bit more of this when I get some more bags for it. Well, folks, I've got some dirt on this carpet. It's not typical of what you'd find on an average living room carpet well unless you're a little bit sad like i am but anyway lots of different size particles including we've got some loose leaf tea we've got some lentils we've got rice we've got rolled oats we've got some of these uh, generic cheerio type things i don't think i think it'll just push those out of the way and we've got some red sand with bits of glitter lovely right it's going to fill the bag, I think, this, isn't it? Let's pass the Electrolux intensity through the middle of this mess. And we'll release. 
Check I'm recording, yes. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Now I had to show you that because I've never seen that happen before, not with any vacuum, not with a Kirby, not with a Hoover Concept one, not with a, a Hoover Senior or convertible. Look at the pattern it's made. Can you see when I turned it on, before I even started moving it, all of the dirt started running for its life. I mean, it's, it's created an odd shape. Wow, that's amazing. Let's, uh, I'm gonna show you that again, but a bit closer. Let's see, see what happens. Crikey, it does have some agitation, this vacuum. Right then, focus folks on this area here. And if you're wearing headphones, turn your volume down now. Right, handle release, on. <laughs> Well, the Cheerios have escaped only because they're too big to go under this nozzle. And of course, there's no height control on this. So I couldn't raise the height. To get these, I'll just have to lift the nozzle up. Blimey. That really has some of the best agitation I've ever seen with an upright vacuum. I mean, yes, it's mainly uprights or powerhead canister cleaners that have agitation like that. I'm not sure if these will dance about, actually, if I just move these unicorn hoops in front of the machine and just let it go. I don't know if it will make them bounce. Let's have a look, though. Well, I think that's just about the end of today's video. I think Electrolux were being fairly truthful when they decided to call this machine Intensity because, pff, wow, it really, really does a good job on a, a carpet with virtually no pile. It actually lifts the little pile it has. I can see this being a good machine to use before shampooing, to be honest. Um, it's not as difficult to get out as a Kirby would be or another of my larger uprights that I consider to be good deep cleaners. This one is absolutely fantastic. Be interesting to see what it's like if I do a whole house clean with this perhaps um, after I've used the cordless cleaner. Once I get to a nice new dust bag in of course and uh, I might treat it to a new filter depending on how much they cost. So it's a nice, quirky, unusual little vacuum cleaner to have in the collection. 
I know that the folding mechanism is probably going to start causing me problems. It's, it's already a little bit stiff, so I dread to think what it's like to dismantle this. I'm just going to try and squirt grease into any of the joints that I can and, and hope for the best. It's not going to get heavy use, obviously, in my home, but it will get used again if I want to do a nice deep clean. And an ideal one for putting in the car, isn't it? It's just that small. I mean, it's a fair weight to it, but pop that in the car boot. Could possibly be the cleaner I take on holiday with me this year. Who knows, I always take a vacuum and often a carpet washer with me when I go on holiday in a holiday cottage. So uh, yeah, maybe the intensity will be taking a trip to North Wales this year. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've got any comments, of course, or questions about this quirky Electrolux, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.